Let's bring in now former FBI profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole. She's also the program director of the Forensic Science Program at George Mason University. Uh, Mary Ellen, thank you so much for being with us. You know, we spoke with you Friday after this arrest was announced. Uh, you know, we're continuing to learn new information. Here it is Monday. And so now we know the daughter of the serial killer known as BTK, Dennis Rader, uh, telling Brian Enton, you know, she's fearing that Koberger may have been in contact with her father. Mary Ellen, if that turns out to be true, how does that change this investigation or, or does it change the investigation? It's too early to say. I don't know that it would change it, but it would reinforce um, that this person um, had an interest in serial killers. And um, if that's true and did reach out to BTK, it's very likely that they reached out to other infamous serial killers or serious um, high profile offenders as well. And it and I heard the daughter say this for criminology students, psychology students, forensic science students. It is not unusual to want to go to a prison and talk to one of these people or communicate by by a letter because they want to hear what they have to say, especially if there's an interest in, you know, how they committed the crime, the planning that went into it. What did you think about it? So I I think that uh, that may sound macabre to other people, but based on the academic pursuits of, of many people, that happens a lot. Right. And it does make sense because the more you learn, certainly the more you know and potentially you could stop something, um, but then again, you know, when something potentially, you know, goes off the deep end, uh, it's a whole nother story. Uh, Mary Ellen, we know investigators, you know, still working to try to determine a motive. How much do you think Koberger's studies, uh, his, you know, apparent fascination with serial killers, if it does turn out to be that, how will that play into determining a motive? Well, there could be multiple motives in a case like this. And and obviously right now he's a suspect. He's not been um, found guilty. But there may be two faces here. Someone that is academically um, very well educated and prepared those questions um, in a survey. So there's an academic interest in what happens when someone is committing a crime. And then you have um, their own interests, their personal interests. Again, if they're if he's found responsible for having committed the crime, so there may be a merging of the two there, where both of those will contribute to the motivations, the academic interest, but also the personal violent ideation that would have preceded the academic pursuit as a PhD student. And you know, and Mariel, this this next question may seem like an obvious answer, but you know, it's we're wording it specifically here. You know, why do you think there are so many examples? of murderers or alleged murderers in this case who also had a fascination or studied criminology or, or subjects like that? Uh, well, I, mean, I have to be honest with you. People are just fascinated by murder. Mm -hmm. um, and as again, as is um, sort of macabre as that sounds, it is it's an absolute interest that's been growing over time. And you can see it by the way these programs have grown in in terms of um, the number of students that apply to be a forensic scientist or apply to be a psychology major um, or a criminology major. So you've got that interest for from the perspective of the non criminal, but then from the perspective of someone who commits a crime, especially a crime like a serial murder case or a mass murder case, we know from past experience how much planning can go into these crimes based on the study that they do of other cases. So they're interested in how it was done, why it was done, how did they prepare. Like as an example, um, the two Columbine shooters, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, um, are, are really um, icons in the whole field of mass murders and people study about their crimes. Yes, they are interested in them, but in a small number of cases, there are people that follow those crimes so that they can do it better, they can do it the same way, they can learn by their mistakes. And we've seen that copycat phenomenon really since um, that preceded, that um, actually preceded Columbine. You know, yeah, that's what you, many times it can be so difficult to, to try to navigate reporting um, on these situations as well. Uh, always a pleasure speaking with you, Mary Ellen. Thank you so much for your insight today. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.